Let's go ahead and talk about how we can customize Cinema 4D's UI to better fit the needs that we have for whatever render engine that we're using. So in this case, I am using Octane Render, and by default, you won't have this layout with Cinema 4D. You'll have like the basic Cinema 4D layout, uh, whatever it is. Let's, this is the startup one uh, right here. Um, let me go ahead and rearrange this. There we go. All right. So uh, this is what you're probably going to have by default. Uh, there's nothing really here. Uh, and working in Octane, in Cinema 4D, there's a lot of menus you go through. So we have this menu. We open up the Live Viewer window. And then when we have that open, uh, we can drag things around however we want. But it kind of gets cumbersome. So let's go ahead and lay things out in a, in a better fashion. So the first thing you are going to want to do, I'm going to go ahead and make that as small as I can. Same thing with this, uh, just because I want this window to be prominent. And let's go ahead and right click on any open space we have up here. And let's do uh, customize palettes. In the customize commands window, you have a filter right here you can type in. So let's go ahead and do octane. And you'll see any, everything with octane in it will be brought up. So what I like to do, and this is just a personal thing, uh, but you can put them wherever you want, is you can put, uh, you just drag these down and place them wherever you want in here. If you don't want them in there, you can try to add them down here. So um, never tried to doing it, never tried doing it down here. You can do a new palette if you want, and then you can drag the palette down here like this and put it right there. And then in the empty palette, you can do a customized palette and then type in octane and then it makes more sense to put perhaps the materials down here because this is where we're going to be working with the materials. So anyways, you can put them right here, you can put them down here, um, doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and start with um, the diffuse material. Let's go ahead and add it there. And then let's just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll add a couple things here. So we have the diffuse, we have glossy, and uh, we'll do octane, uh, where is it? specular material and again this is just uh, just for example and then you can also add in the uh, node editor as well which I find to be handy I like to put that at the front just because I like that having to be the first option you could also do the live database open live DB I like to put that right there so you can open up the live DB for Octane, as well as open up the node editor, and then you have all your material options down here. Um, you can put them up here, like I said, that's how I had it laid out in mine. Now the next thing you can do is, if you go to um, Octane up here, you have this button you can have, you can click on right here, and you can drag this out, and now you have a floating window. If you take this and you drag it, you can put it wherever you want. So by example, you can put it right there. Uh, but what I actually like to do is I like to open up the Octane dialog. So this is not the live viewer. And let's go ahead and drag this out. Let's undock that. Close that out. And then let's take this. Should be able to... It's not going to let me... Yeah, it will. Okay, I like to put that right there. There we go. Scroll that up. Now what I have right here is everything for Octane right here at the top. And then I don't have to worry about going through other menus. And then also from here you can create everything you need as well as you know other, other stuff. But again, I like to have as few menus to look through as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lights and I'm gonna drop these down here, which is where I like to put them, put them right above the materials, and then I can work with the lights there. Again, you have um, the objects here. You can do tune lights if you want. Uh, and again, if you don't find anything here that you can add, all you have to do is right click, customize palette, and then look for anything you want. Octane camera. And we can put that up here, for instance, over here, so it's separate from everything Cinema 4D related. And uh, then you can just go ahead and place them wherever you want, and it's really nice. Uh, the next thing is 
that I like to do uh, as a personal thing is when I'm working with Octane and I want to see live settings, I go to options, or sorry, not here, but here for the dialog window for Octane. Go to options, viewport rendering, make sure that's checked. That way if I were to add an object and hit render, it starts rendering and then in here you have all the same basic controls that you would in Cinema 4D so you hold down alt left click you can um, rotate around the object middle mouse button you can pan right mouse button you zoom in and out and it updates in real time it makes it super nice and then when you're ready to add a light you just add a light and you can uh, make changes to your light inside of here as well and you don't have to worry about not Ren stopping a render and then starting a render and then all of that nonsense you just have all the controls you need right here so it makes it really nice uh, now uh, the downside to this is after a while when your scene starts getting really heavy you're gonna wanna not do this so all you do is if you don't want live view uh, uh, in here you just go to options and uncheck it and it turns off or you can keep it checked do your render and then just hit pause and then when you go out to do your change, it'll turn off. And then uh, automatically, you make your change. Go ahead and unpause, hit render again, and it starts up again, so on and so forth. That is super easy. That's that's the best way I can uh, set up. That that in my opinion, that's the best thing you can do uh, to make it easier to work inside of uh, Octane with Cinema 4D. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, resize this again. And uh, this is what I have laid up. I have my materials up here. Again, probably makes more sense to put them down here. Uh, but I'm just going to keep it like that. And it's kind of skinwampus right now because of uh, the change in window size. So I can just close Cinema 4D and reopen it and it'll be just fine. Now when you're ready to make the changes permanent, you just go to Window, Customization, and then save it as the startup layout. And then every time you open up uh, Cinema 4D, you'll have it set up just like this. So go ahead and close that. Go ahead and run Cinema 4D. See if it comes up. Might not. Sometimes it gets stuck in the tasks. Don't know why. It's not. So, it just is being dumb. Let's try again. There we go. I have a lot of plugins, so it's going to take a minute. Okay, so now that it's opened up, I have my default layout here, and it opens up full screen. It does that every time, as it should, but it's kind of obnoxious. So I'll just do this. There we go. All right, so now I got my basic startup layout here, and uh, call that good. So that's how you can customize Cinema 4D to work a little bit more, uh, a little bit more fluidly with uh, Octane. Another thing you can do, uh, just real quick, is launch the Live Viewer window, and you can drag that out over here, and uh, if you have enough window space, anyways, you can do this. Uh, I, on the other hand, actually don't like doing this uh, because of this live viewer rendering right there. There we go. So now we have the Octane uh, window over here instead of out here. And uh, again, you can do all the same motions inside of this as you would out here. And it's, it works about the same. It, it just really depends on your preference. If I come from view, uh, so having a small preview window over window over here uh, felt really good for a really long time and this is how I used to run it uh, but I've since moved away from this and just kept this set up and then just kept the viewport rendering because that uh, to me makes just a little bit more sense because Octane so flipping quick so anyways uh, thank you for uh, viewing this uh, tutorial and if you have any questions or concerns or any more suggestions go ahead and shout out to me and I'll see you in the next one